Are you open-minded? And do you think that's a good thing? This is the Revelation series where we are reading the book of Revelation. And right now we're going to talk about the part where it's talking about open-mindedness. The world we live in today is saying, be open-minded. And it's really glorified sin. But just like that old song, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And that's what's happening in our world today. People are scared to speak if they're not open-minded. If they're not conforming to the sin around them. Or at least condoning it. But I want to tell you what the Bible says about it. I am in Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. The scripture says, But I have few complaints against you. You tolerate some among you whose teachings is like that of Balaam, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols, by committing sexual sin. In similar way, you have some Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. Repent of your sin, or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To every man who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven, and I will give to each one a white stone, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. Let's talk about that. The study Bible says there is room for differences of opinion amongst Christians in some areas, but there is no room for hearsay and moral impurity. Your town might not participate in idol feast, but it probably has pornography, sexual sin, cheating, gossip, and lying. Don't tolerate sin by bowing to the pressure to be open-minded. Balak was king who feared the large number of Israelites traveling through his country, so he hired Balaam to pronounce a curse on them. Balaam refused to do so at first, but an offer of money made him willing. Later, Balaam introduced the Israelites to turn to idol worship. Here, Christ rebuked the church for tolerating those who, like Balaam, were leading people away from God. Peer pressure, even as an adult, is a thing. There are people that will try their best to get you into sin, just as hard as you're trying to get them out of it. That's why we must read the Word of God, renew our minds daily, and keep the Spirit forefront in front of our flesh. Be more in your spirit and less in your flesh. When we are in our flesh, we are tempted. Just like Jesus in the wilderness, when he was tempted because he was hungry, he was tempted with bread. You're going to be tempted with things too. You're going to be tempted with a lot. And knowing what not to fall into is huge right now. Knowing that it's not conforming to sin, conforming to the world, to the patterns of this world. The Bible tells us not to do that. So it doesn't matter if everybody's doing it. doesn't matter what they think of you because you're not. What matters is if you are in error or if you are in sound doctrine. If you are reading the Bible and you are learning about Jesus and you are finding out right from wrong, then you can follow the Holy Spirit's guidance. You will have discernment. You will know when things are right and when they're wrong. Then you have free will. So it's up to you whether you follow that or not. But we won't get to make excuses when we get to heaven. We will have to confess with our mouth. So standing up for what you believe in right now is so important. Don't conform to the world. Don't worry about what your friends think, what your family thinks, what those around you think. Start questioning things. Why do we do this? Why do I say this? Does that line up with the Bible? Those kind of questions can push you into the right path, into the narrow path, and off that broad road. I hope this helps somebody today, because just like the end of this passage, we want the manna. We want the white stones that have our names engraved in them. In other words, we want to go to heaven. And how you do that is walking the righteous path. Believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and now you are walking with him. And you should be able to tell that. You should be able to look at a Christian and know whose side they're on. Are they a part of the world? Or are they of Jesus? May God bless you, and I will see you soon for another episode in the Revelation series.